Hey, dude, this dog like stinks, man. Okay, groomer, do something about it, man. Hello, you pet stylist. You found the Groom Pod. Welcome to our virtual salon. My name is Susie, and I'm your host. I'm a mobile groomer from Seattle, Washington, and anyone who knows me will tell you I love to talk, especially about my job. One of my favorite people to talk to is my friend and mentor and co star of the show, Miss Barbara Bird. Hey, Susie, I'm here. I'm in South Carolina. Oh, it's so exciting. This is just so cool. Barbara, you sound fantastic. Your audio is great. I can see you for the first time in months, and that's fantastic. Welcome to episode 416 of the Groom Pod, recorded on June 23rd, 2024 in Snohomish, Washington, and for the very first time in Simpsonville, South Carolina. This podcast is brought to you by our kind sponsors, Best Shot, Show Season, Precision Sharp, Groom more and Stasco. And if you guys would like to tip the podcasters or you would like to support the show, you can do so with our donation button that currently says donate to Barbara and the Patreon subscription by searching for GroomPod on Patreon or using the button on the website. This week, we're going to talk about Barbara's journey across country. We're going to talk about whether we shave or don't shave. And do we need to rinse before conditioning? What's new this week is brought to you by Groomore Software. If you haven't found Groomore, you're missing out. Groomore is an all-in-one software solution for your grooming business. Whether you are a solo mobile groomer or manage several shops, Groomore has everything you need. 24-hour online booking and forms, routing, credit card processing, reminders, Google Calendar and QuickBooks integration, and so much more. And the best customer service anywhere. Shop mobile or house call, Groomore has you covered. And they're giving us a free month. Just enter GroomPod22 in the coupon code. This is truly the culmination of quite an adventure, Barbara, at your age there. It's pretty impressive. You impress me all the time. But this willingness to go across country and start your life anew. I can already see it. You look younger. You have less wrinkles. You've got a smile. You're brilliant again. It's so nice to have you back, Barbara. I am so relieved to be here and out of there. And sad as it was for me to leave Tucson, which I I dearly love, this is the best this is the best solution for the, my next chapter. And what a trip. Oh, my God. What a trip. Susie, I think people know that I had a really hard time getting my shit together to move because it was just so overwhelming. I had so much freaking stuff. Way too much clothing, way too much this, way too many drums from my past. 30 some years packed into this huge place that was three buildings and having to narrow it down to two rooms and a bathroom, which is perfect for me. Excellent. (laughs) It's just perfect for me to be in a compact place where I don't have to do too many steps to get around in a nice solid wood floor where I'm not even having to use my cane. Same thing as what happened last year when we visited and we stayed with Curtis at his um, uh, lake house. Yes. And I found myself on the wooden floor. One day it took me to ditch my cane. Same (laughs) thing here. Nice. So... That happened, and this morning I got up to prepare my material for this podcast, and I had such better mental clarity returned. You know, my cardiologist told me that was going to happen because I cried to her that I thought I was getting Alzheimer's because I was so uh, frazzled mentally, cognitively. 
I was having a hard time spelling. I was having a hard time finding my words. And it, it was all so apparent that it wasn't good. And it was frightening to me. And she said, you know, I think a lot of what you're suffering from is just from the stress of your situation. And darn, Nurse Jackie was right on. <laughs> we appreciate that about Nurse Jackie. We'll miss Nurse Jackie, though. Well, uh, there are several people back there that supported me in making it to the finish line, Healthcare people that, that supported me. And then I want to thank, thank, thank all the people of the groom pod that contributed to my journey and that sent a little something. It's, oh, thank you so much. I never would have made it without you. I can't believe that it took me six months after I closed my shop to get my ass out of Tucson. And I could have spent another six months sorting through my stuff, trying to organize it and just being overwhelmed and taking a nap. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> because I had left so much undone. It was absolute chaos at the end with me directing four or five people, leave this, take that, put that in the truck, put this in my car, throw that away, throw that <laughs> away, throw that away, throw, never mind, fuck it, fuck it. <laughs> you know, that was me trying to gear myself up trying to actually I left so much stuff oh I bet I, I left some new stuff even it was just horrible and I just got to where I didn't care at all I just wanted to get out of there and then Danny came from South Carolina to drive me and uh, fell and hurt his foot, couldn't help as much as he wanted to, had to hole up in the hotel. They, the heat was overwhelming. It was like in the hundreds and we're trying to walk in and out of the house, which isn't air conditioned anyway, and load this truck up. And he's had heat stroke and we just plowed through it. Then we left. Let's do a special thank you to everybody who packed you up, which includes Yvonne and her family and Miranda and Dave. And who else was there? Oh, and that sharpener guy. Ross Merrill. Ross Merrill is doing this etching thing and he made me a, a thermos with this goodbye message etched in it and my name on it and a doggy. He's got a new product thing going. I mean... Forget those water bottles. This is it. I loved it. I'm so grateful for everybody's help. Yeah. This is so obviously the right thing that we did. And um, I'm even adjusting to the humidity without a lot of suffering because I'm here and I'm safe and I'm happy. And I've got people around me to talk to, to help me. And an extra special thank you to those people, because I know Lynn will eventually hear this. So thank you to Lynn and Danny. Eternal thanks. Like, I couldn't thank them enough. There's not enough words to thank them for what they're doing. I know. They would take this on and take me out of the box, so to speak, <laughs> without knowing exactly what they were getting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I, you know, like... Oh, Barbara, did you really say that? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I dropped the F bomb the yesterday at a Walmart and everybody looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you don't do that in the South. <laughs> Women, ladies, don't drop the F bomb in public. Oh, uh, well, they better get used to it, by golly. It's the new South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> something happened while we were in between our moving. And that something is a new tool from Jody Murphy. Have you seen it? No. You're kidding. I had a little wind of it. I saw when she was going to, you know, unfold it or whatever you call it, unroll it or drop it. You saw the buildup, but the tool itself is a flexible carding rake it's flexible 
So the head moves, and it's got an interesting shape like a hula ho. Do you know what a hula yeah. ho looks like? Yeah. It looks like that, only squished down a little bit. And there's a couple, maybe two or three different whiffs, but it looks very gentle. And watching her do the back of her cocker, it just looks like it might be a really helpful tool. So I'm hoping that she'll send us one. Oh, I love Either tools, you- Jody. <laughs> <laughs> Pick me. <laughs> yeah, right. Us. Pick us. We'll talk about it. I also got a book, two books from one of our listeners, Anna, and they are clippers and scissor, uh, clipper blades and scissor informational books. So I'm going to look at those, review them. I'll probably send them to you, Barbara, so you can review them. And then we'll chat about them because they look like neat little book- booklets. Yeah. They're booklets. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 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 All right. Well, let's do like the hardcore groom pod stuff and learn something. All right, let's take a break and then we'll be back with our first appointment. Let me tell you about Best Shot's newest addition to the Ultramax Pro line. Ultramax Hair Hold is a flexible hairspray that can be layered on for a stronger hold. Ultramax Hair Hold Spray is great, but my favorite new product is called the Max, and I won't groom without it. It's a fragrance-free ultra-concentrate conditioner and detangler. It reduces drying time and handles undercoat and tangles like magic. Just a few drops in the final rinse or spray it on and dry it in. Contact your favorite Best Shot distributor or learn more online at bestshotpet.com. Grooming success begins with Best Shot in your tub. Made from the best stuff on earth. Ready, groomers? Here comes our first appointment. To shave or not to shave, that is the question. It's something that we all face, especially in this world full of doodles and people who want their doodles to look shaggy and natural, but don't ever do anything about maintaining the coat. So that's our job, of course. That's our moneymaker right there. But let's talk a little bit about whether we shave a coat or not or how to decide whether to shave it or what might be the alternatives if we decide to try to keep that and the first part of the question happens when the dog walks in the door of your shop or you arrive at the house whether you're mobile or stationary and you get your hands on the dog and that's a really important step you've got to have a conversation with the people at that point and prepare them for the potential that you're gonna have to take their dog down and any suggestions for that conversation you can direct it to the dog (laughs) oh that's great that's so good (laughs) Hi, Brutus. Oh, my goodness. Looks like you're going to have to have a really short haircut today. (laughs) So sorry. You know, like, boy, is he a little tangled? If you do it with uh, clarity and courtesy and a little humor and repeat yourself, say it more than once if it's bad news because... They might miss it the first time because they don't want to hear that. And also, express some empathy. I totally understand. I totally get it why you don't want him to be shaved. I wouldn't want to shave this dog if he were my own. I would want him to be rough and furry and all of that. But there comes a time in every coated dog's life where it's time for a fresh start. I like it when you give it a cute name, like a nudie or a bikini cut or a smoothie. A smoothie. That's a tent all over. Uh, It's good to give it a cute name so that it doesn't feel like you're completely destroying the style on the dog. (laughs) I, I think it really helps to know your client. Sometimes you get the benefit of knowing whose dog it's worth saving a coat on and whose dog it's not worth saving a coat on because there are people out there that really don't care that much. They don't mind at all if their dog is short. But there are also people out there like Barbara. I would never shave Barbara's dog. (laughs) You could pay me enough money to shave all the hair off of Barbara's dog. No way. (laughs) There are people that will do the work to maintain the coat. That's worth it. And it's true that some of the people that for whom shaving is the worst sin just happen for one reason or another 
not to have done their homework and then they're just flabbergasted and broken and you just got to counsel them through it you know support them through the acceptance of reality you can have them feel the coat and see what you are looking at you can take a comb and show them how it's not going to go through although you have to be careful that you don't hurt the dog i would never do that you know good yeah. <laughs> It's just a matter of having some empathy for their loss of how they want to see their dog. And it's so important to actually fully communicate. I have a tendency to be a worst case scenario person. Like I'll go in and I'll say, I really don't think I can save the coat. You need to prepare yourself for having a really short summer cut this time right. and um, making no promises, but... It's so cool when you then can leave some hair on the dog afterwards. And that's really the key is communication. If you let them know what could potentially happen and not sugarcoat it, like be aware, there's some really tight mats around the ankles. And unless you want your dog to look like walking shrubbery, you're going to have some uh, short body to match those short legs because we can't brush around those ankle bones very easily. You have to be creative. You can help them make choices. Yeah. Yeah. You can help them make choices. Do you want uh, high waters? Or cut out mats. That's another option. If you can just cut out some of the bigger mats. Looks horrible. It does. Moth eaten. Yeah. As long as there's nobody sick in the family, I say chemotherapy patient. I can <laughs> definitely take out the mats, but it's going to look a little rough. You might save the coat that way. But the truth is the damage is done in this case. So unless the person's really going to try to maintain that coat as it grows back in, which people ignore. They're like, oh, it's too short. I don't need to comb my dog anymore. And then all of a sudden there's an inch and a half of hair and they never touched it. That happens often. I always tell them that this is a good time to start grooming, even though you think they don't need much because they'll get used to you doing it regularly. You can work yourself up with skills, blah, blah, blah. Good point. There are occasions where I will opt to shave whether the client likes it or not, and that's at coat change. I never really want to save a coat change coat for the adulthood on the dog. So if I've got a coat change that has gone awry, then I'm going to go ahead and shave the dog down, suggest to them that that's the best possible choice, explain a little bit about puppy coat versus adult coat and why we would want to take it off and start, like you say, Barbara, start brand new at that point. Oh, yeah, because if the dog has, isn't even used to grooming, you don't want to start out with a painful, miserable, stressful grooming that's not good for the dog. Sometimes it's really for the dog's sake over your sake. Absolutely. And you can even say, I'm not willing to put him through the difficulty, the stress of, of dematting when he's nine months old. Let's give the dog a break and a fresh start. I think that's definitely the way to go. Now, I used to always shave the dog before I did the bath. And I still will occasionally do that if I know I'm taking everything off and it's just going to be that much easier to dry the dog. But nowadays, for the most part, with the products we have, I will bathe and properly prepare that coat as best as I possibly can to potentially be able to leave some hair on the dog. And there's a couple ways to do that. What do you do before the bath these days? Well, if you were grooming, because <laughs> now you're not currently grooming. But now I'm a know-it-all, and I can just talk about it. <laughs> you get a bell for that. <laughs> what kind of stuff do you do before the bath, if anything? Very little. Yeah, I've changed completely. I don't do much before the bath either. I rarely do things. If it's really badly matted and I'm going to try for it, I might split some mats. Ears and tail, I might split those mats before I do the bathing. Everybody else, I bathe, and as I'm drying, I'm hunting for those mats that need to be split. And right next to me is either my 
letter opener type of a slicer or my small scissors that I can cut through those mats with. And as I'm blowing and can kind of see really what's happening in the anatomy of the mat, if you will, then I'll cut some of those apart when I'm drawing, especially around ankles, on toes, where I can see really good because the hair's out of my way. But that's about it. I don't do much else. That's where I like to have a stand dryer that blows on the hair as I'm brushing and working on it, because then I can see what's deep inside there and make choices. What about wet clipping? Do you ever do that? I do. That's like one of my last resort to save the coat for somebody that I really know it means something to. I do a fair amount of wet clipping, but the first time I did it, I was completely freaked out. I didn't really know how my clippers were going to take it. I didn't know if I was going to electrocute myself. So how do you go about doing a wet clip? Well, first of all, I always use a GFCI outlet to plug in my clipper or a cordless clipper to clip a wet coat. I usually do it right out of the tub before I even towel and have the dog loaded with conditioner, not even rinse the conditioner. I rinse the shampoo out real good. I leave the conditioner kind of in. And then I use whatever blade I can kind of work through. And what happens is that the wet coat some hairs will get cut and some hairs will kind of slide through. And you so you don't have as uniform a clip as you would dry clipping. And I prepare the people for that. That's part of their choice. I can wet clip with a five blade and finish it with a four blade, but it's going to look a little rough. And there's probably going to be places where I'm going to have to go short, like the armpits and the elbows and, you know, things like that. So they can make that choice. I'm not going to have as good a finish as if I was working on a combed out hair. So what do you do? But it'll help for the next haircut. I do the same thing. I let everybody know that it's going to be a more rustic look, which after a few weeks, your haircut looks that way a little bit anyway, because parts of it gets matted down and other parts are a little bit longer. So I just say you won't get the beautiful plush stuffed animal look that you get the day or the week of your grooming, but you have hair then to work with in a month that wouldn't have been there in the first place. So it's a compromise and it's a good compromise. I also, as you guys know, use a clipper vac. Barbara does too often or occasionally. (laughs) Barbara uses it occasionally. I use it all the time. But the Romanis have a rocker comb. Way back when clip-on combs started, Oster had the first clip-on combs, and they had rocker bottoms. They had rounded bottoms on the combs, which was not great for going through the longer haircuts necessarily. I think the angled combs did better at that when they were plastic. But the little number three rocker comb, which snaps right over the end of your 30 blade, and a vacuum system can take off tangles that you could not get through otherwise between the suction and that rocker comb, I rarely have to shave a coat because I use that technique. And I also use proper products in the bath because that really has an effect on your ability to get underneath along with drying technique to get underneath those mats with that number three rocker comb. But that really is my secret weapon. I have four of them. I would like one. You would? Uh, I want one. Okay. Well, you've talked about them so much. And that's the one kind of snap-on comb that I'm missing. One of the beautiful things that rocker comb does, occasionally it cuts the top of the mat off. And if you can cut the end of the mat off, so often you can brush that mat out. Oh, yeah, you can scissor too. That's another thing. That goes back to what do you do before the bath. Sometimes if I'm really tackling a job, I will scissor over the dog real quickly and just like cut off the ends of those mats so that I can release the hair. I do that a lot with butts, with breeches, with pants, 
yeah. anything back there. If there's a way I can cut the end of that off and free its inner being <laughs> and let that <laughs> hair go, I will do it and save that butt. Uh, yeah, so there are alternatives. Know who you're saving coat for and who you're not saving coat for because you don't want to waste your time. Some people are really quite tolerant. And and charge more. Yeah, yes. Charge considerably more. I'm such a proponent of keeping track of your time and charging by time. You don't have to tell people that's how you're pricing yourself, but know that you should get X amount of dollars per hour. And if it takes you two and a half hours, do the math. I'm a time times energy. Time multiplied by energy that it took. So if the dog's difficult, that's a multiplier. Good point. <laughs> okay, I hope that helps some of you guys out there with some of your dematting challenges. Let's take a quick break here, and Barbara's going to tell us whether we need to rinse our shampoo off before we condition. Shell Season has a great enzymatic cleaner called Kennel Fresh. And you dilute it with warm water and it smells good. And then it evaporates to be a deodorant. As the kettle fresh dries, it's enzymatic. It eats the bacteria and the odor source. So it's really good stuff. You can use it indoors or out. Find it at your local distributors or showseasongrooming.com. We want to welcome Randy and Cheryl Lowe from Precision Sharp and invite you to check out their website where you can see their newest precise cut shear called Lynx. It's a patented design featuring a thumb ring that slides the length of the handle for perfect ergonomic placement of your thumb. Slide it and lock it into position to get your best groom on. Check it out at precisionsharp.com. Groomers, take your seats. It's time for Bee Bird's Classroom. This is a common question amongst groomers, and it was brought to my attention by a new Groom Pod listener named Gina Bruno. Hi, Gina. Finally, 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 here's her answer. And I apologize for the delay, but hey, you know what's been going on with my life, and I know you forgive me for it. But it's a serious question. Not only did Gina ask me this, but another groomer wrote me and asked me the same question as I'm traveling across the country. <laughs> Two dogs on my, on my lap in the cab of the truck, 17-year-old cat worried about in the back with my Toyota air conditioning going back there so that she won't die. We made it. <laughs> So, Gina, here's your answer. I have prepared this by writing it out into kind of a lecture. And I'm just going to read it like this because I want to be very clear. And I want to help you really get it, okay? The question, is it a good idea or a bad idea to apply conditioner without rinsing shampoo out of a coat? The simple answer would be... Applying conditioner on top of shampoo could possibly diminish the action of the conditioner or the cleanser, but probably not enough to worry about. Go ahead and try it. The more accurate answer, however, is not so simple. Sorry. Here's a serving of science to help us understand better. Surfactants are the engines of shampoos and conditioners. There are other ingredients in shampoos and conditioners, but the surface acting agents or surfactants do the heavy lifting. The chemical nature of the primary surfactants of shampoo and the main surfactants of conditioners are diametrically opposed. Basically, Shampoos use negative energy and conditioners use positively charged molecules. So they're at odds with each other. Both cleansing surfactants and conditioning surfactants are powered by ionic forces. Ionic forces are electrostatic 
in nature, static. Think of static. Think of how you can rub a, a balloon and stick it on another balloon. Electrostatic forces are fairly mild exchanges of energy. Ionic forces are at work in shampoos and conditioners. Surfactant molecules have water-loving heads that have a strong attraction to water. This allows them to break the surface tension of water and create a uniform mixture in the water. Shampoo cleansing surfactants, also known as detergents, are anionic and carry a negative charge on their heads. This makes them water loving. The technical name is hydrophilic. The tails of the molecules are water hating or oil loving. This relationship is called hydrophobic. The hydrophobic tails are attracted to the oil and soil on the surface of the hair. The negative charge of the cleansing surfactant allows them to pull the dirt and oil from the hair and skin and hold it in the water until it's rinsed off. As long as the molecules retain their charge, they will not let go of the soil and oil attached to the tails. Conditioners, on the other hand, utilize surfactants that are cationic and carry a positive charge, which gives them the ability to cling to the hair. The negative charge shampoo ingredients and the positive charge conditioner ingredients are naturally opposed. What can happen? Well, let me tell you. When you mix anionic and cationic surfactants together, two things can happen. One, the positive and negative charge molecules can neutralize and fall out of the su suspension. And there you have less cleansing and less conditioning. The anionic cleansing molecules get lazy and the cationic conditioner molecules have less cling power. Or two, the anionic and cationic molecules can combine to form a particulate that deposits on the hair and is hard to remove, similar to soap scum. But sometimes you can get away with it. When can you get away with it? Variable factors coming up. <laughs> One, how the shampoo is applied. Hand washing leaves considerable suds and shampoo in the coat. Recirculating systems rinse as they clean and leave very little shampoo in the coat. So one groomer told me that she likes to rinse out 80%. as similar, but although it, a recirculating system is probably going to rinse out 90 to 95% of the anionic cleansing agents. The ratio of ionic to cationic. So a greater amount of shampoo in the coat means more dueling ions when you add the conditioner. Three, conditioners are usually much less concentrated than shampoos. So there's fewer conditioner soldiers to have a war <laughs> with the uh, anionic soap molecules. By the way, ready-to-use conditioner products are often 85% to 90% water. Number four, the formulation of the products. Milder surfactants are less likely to have problems mixing with cationic surfactants. There is a third type of surfactant called non-ionic that does not have the extra charge and is less bothered by cationic forces in the water mix. So those are things like the uh, sugar surfactants and the uh, ephoteric surfactants, amphoacetate, those kind of weird baby shampoo, mild ingredients, sulfate-free, not all sulfate-free shampoos are as gentle 
as the non-ionic conditioners. The, they will still battle with the cationics. The importance of water. While it is understandable that groomers want to save time and save water, we must acknowledge that water is an essential element of cleaning and conditioning chemistry. The chemistry doesn't happen without the water. Water is necessary for the shampoo system to operate. The cleaning engine doesn't rev up without the presence of water, and our powerful cleaning surfactants must be thoroughly removed at the end of the shampoo to avoid stripping the hair and irritating the skin. Water is a tool, not a nemesis. Please use it wisely. That's it. Did you understand that? It's basically how shampoos clean and how conditioners work, which are very opposite. Because now we understand the charge factor. We understand why they're incompatible to a certain extent. But everything changes with a recirculator. You have less of a potential for problems with a recirculating system because there isn't enough anionic molecules left in the coat when you turn off the system to interfere with the conditioner. What usually gets lost in a shampoo and conditioner battle is the conditioner. It makes complete sense why it wouldn't do what it's supposed to do right. if it's having to battle the shampoo. So yeah, okay, well, I hope that answers the question. I'm sure it does. And like I said in the beginning, it might be irrelevant. You might get away with it. It depends on your products and it depends on their formulation and it depends on your water. Go ahead and try it, but no, you could be risking some cleaning and some conditioning. Would you go waste the money, right? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I don't like pouring money down the drain. If I need to do a conditioning, I don't want to mix it over the top of my shampoo. Well, then your conditioner isn't going to work as well. What you've got left are your additives. I'm definitely a less is more person. First of all, if I don't feel like I need a real conditioning, I'm going to do a spray on conditioning. If I think I need a light conditioning, I'm going to do results rinse with a little the max in it. If I think I need more than that, I'm going to use an actual rinse through conditioner. And at that point, I don't want to battle my shampoo. If I've gotten to the decision that I need a real live hardcore conditioner on there, I want it to work effectively. Right. So that's my feeling. All right. Okay. Cool. Well, Barbara, do you have anything you would like to tell our listeners about moving and about planning to move? Is there anything that you would do differently at 84? <laughs> <laughs> Words of advice. <laughs> Don't do like I did. <laughs> okay. Don't go to That's probably good. Don't don't take a nap instead of packing. Just keep back. <laughs> I couldn't. I just couldn't. I have to forgive myself. I forgive you. It all worked out. And the truth is the troops didn't come to my urgent pleas for help until the last minute. But we're grateful they did show up. Hey, I got a, something to tell you, Barbara. What? My new truck. Yeah. Do you remember way back forever ago, somebody once said that you can eat a Chevrolet if you do it one bite at a time. Yeah. Maisie tried to eat my truck. No. Maisie tried to eat your truck? Yep. It looked like a bear took its claws and gouged oh. the paint on my front fender. I have parked a car, my Explorers, next to her for the last two years, she's never touched my car. I don't know what it is about this truck, but I got to park it way over to the side. It could be the color. The color. It could be the size. Yeah, it could be it reminds her of something from her past. I don't know, but it was crazy. I walked out of my first appointment and I went, <gasps> no. It 
was awful. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Oh, your new truck. But otherwise, it's working great. I'm really happy to have it. It's a little difficult to maneuver, but I'm getting around. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. Barbara, we're so happy to have you back. We'll be back on our regularly scheduled podcast schedule from here on in. Thanks for listening, everybody. Barbara, happy you landed and all is going well. Happy grooming to everyone, and we'll see you next week on the Groom Pod. Bye-bye now. Take care of yourselves. We love you.